Miss? Miss? <coughs> I hadn't slept in weeks, so a long car ride was like a lullaby. Ahmad, my driver, was a mid-50s Persian gentleman with a penchant for Indian soul music. <laughs> Seemed like perhaps he was from Iran. We connected over his Vote Vote him out! bumper sticker. Sorry, I'm up. I'm talking through a mask, just so you know. The pandemic ain't over for everybody. Or anyone, really. They always knew, but they purposely hid the truth. It's a bit of a pattern. Is it this house? Yes. Every ride is giving me glimpse into my passenger's journey. Of life. This one is either running away from or running to something. But aren't we all? <laughs> Those are Ahmad's inner thoughts. You'll get to hear from more than me on this journey. Thanks for the trip, Ahmad. A trip that cost me almost $600. Of course. This is my longest fare ever. <laughs> Good for me, maybe bad for you. In my country, we have saying, Chedas to Golba Abdadim. That means, what did we do so wrong? But we must find a reason to a smile, even though it feels like the end of days. Stay safe, my brother. His smile was warm. Forgive me, I didn't even introduce myself. I'm Janine Hamilton. I'm mid to late 30s. Some mystery is good. And I'm black. I'll be guiding you through what happened on Wednesday morning. A Pete Chapman Podcast. I arrived at the house around 11 a.m. The entire neighborhood of pretentious palatial estates was trashed and covered in graffiti proclaiming and you could feel the anger emanating from the spray paint. I was down with it. Four maskless guys hanging off the side of a pickup truck. Classy. The new normal. The wildest of the bunch was holding a flag emblazoned with the letters TTF in the Cyrillic alphabet. That's Russian. But Russia? This was not. Nevertheless, their hands were in everything these people did. I locked eyes with that kid and etched his face in my memory. I even gave him a name. Rusty. I gathered myself as I made my way to the door. <sighs> Janine. Last night was rough, Dad. My dad looked like he always does. Custom three-piece suit, colorful socks, and of course, no mask. But his hugs always made me feel better. Brenda, I know you're up there laughing. She's just like you. Showing up at the exact moment, I'm minding my own business. He looked like he was hiding something. He doesn't do it often, but I know it when I see it. Come on in, sweetheart. Mm-hmm. He'd clearly collected more art since I last visited. Expensive ugly shit that he just continues to waste his money on. But hey, that's just my opinion. Of which I have many. I, uh, figured you'd be laying low today, Janine. Especially after the results. Let's be clear. On this day, results should always be surrounded by air quotes. The election was called for dear leader while the polls were still open. He'd spent the last four years making a mockery out of democracy. <laughs> Mail-in ballots were never even considered, and no one challenged it. Oye, bájale un poquito. We don't want it to burn. Okay. Thankfully, Pearl appeared from the kitchen, and I could avoid this conversation. For now. 
guapita. Oh, that pearl. Her eyes said it all. Why? Because that's all I had to read. My girl Pearl had her mask on. Gracias. Ay, Dios mío. Poor Janine is going to be unhappy. But hey, I just work here. While Pearl had worked for my father forever and knew him just about as well as I do, this Adam fella had just started within the last month or so. Hi, Janine. I'm Adam. It's an honor and a pleasure. Eager to please, I see, but no mask. She doesn't look like a left-wing radical nut. Judging from Pearl and Adam's tuxedos and whatever was going on in the kitchen, something was up. Before I could say anything, my dad announced, I'm having a get-together. I'll get it. I've watched a lot of movies, and one of the first things you notice is that a doorbell can change your life. What's behind that door? Who's behind that door? Flowers? Well, who doesn't love that? A subpoena? Well, that's the start of a horrible day. Unless you're an elected official with the current administration and you can decide to just ignore your legal and civic duties with absolutely no consequence. That doorbell, however, offered something I would have never expected. Yeah, I'm looking for Wesley. It's a pleasure to meet you, Rusty. Please, come in. It was the kid from the pickup truck. And shit, his name was Rusty. Two points. We locked eyes, but he showed no recognition. Unsurprisingly, nothing really shone on his face, except perhaps the clear discomfort and confusion of being in the palatial estate of a black man. Now that I could get a look at him, still no mask, I clocked his dusty overalls and muddied cowboy boots. He was carrying that flag with the letters TTF in the Cyrillic alphabet, neatly folded into a triangle, like you see at military funerals. My dad hugged him. Whitaker told me all about you. You're not exactly who I thought he'd pick to help me change the face of this collective. But I will try not to judge a book by its tattered cover. Our power comes through our process, son. To the future. Through the present. To the future. TTF. That's when Adam entered the foyer. May I take that flag for you, sir? Careful with that, boy. <laughs> you caught that. I caught that. My dad caught that. Wow. Did Adam? I don't know. If he did, he had zero trouble ignoring it. Your coat, sir? No. <laughs> <laughs> of course. As you wish. Adam headed back into the kitchen, holding that flag like it mattered. Rusty and I locked eyes. Awkward. To the drawing room. Everyone looked at their phones. Rusty was eager to read the headline. Our dear leader has just added a title to his name. The Kazar. Czar. <laughs> yeah. The Czar of social media giving him the power to govern all media platforms. <laughs> In his first order of business, he has granted himself tremendously strong approval to extend his social media messaging character maximum to... Unlimited. Uh -uh. <clears throat> Citizens will only be allowed to publish social media on Sundays after mandatory church and football boycotts as a result of the league's new tolerance for player self-expression. <laughs> Source. <laughs> Why does that matter? It always matters. It was right then that I turned off my phone, and it wasn't to save the battery. I stood at the archway to the drawing room with my father, both of us keeping a watchful eye on Rusty as he examined my dad's stuff. More of his prized art. Tchotchkes, pictures, diplomas. 
Rusty seemed most fascinated by an elevated architectural plan for an apartment project that was my father's pride and joy. The blueprints for the fair housing complex look really nice, Dad. You did good. You have no idea how much that means to me. Oh, I know, right? Sweet daddy-daughter moment. But then, my father signaled for me to take off my mask. You're home, Neen. And I haven't left the house in weeks. It's safe. Nowhere feels safe today. I kept my mask on. I didn't expect to see you until tomorrow. I wanted to prepare the right words. Your mother was better at this kind of thing. I'm very proud of you. Even though it was a long shot, you went all in on your campaign. All in cost me my job, my apartment. What? After the results came in, I was immediately notified that my apartment lease would no longer be honored. How is this a surprise? You own the building. I own a lot of buildings. Why didn't you call me? Do you know what I've been through in the last 24 hours? I'll fix it. Your mother and I. That was our first investment property. Well, it's the world we live in now. There's a price to pay for those of us who go against the dear leader. Listen, you're welcome to join us. In fact, after all these years, I'd love for you to see what we do and how we do it. Afterward, we can even watch that news channel you love so much and catch up properly. Is my room still? Untouched. Yep. Your call. I wanted to run upstairs, slam my door, and blast Jill Scott. Or Lauren Hill. Or Fiona Apple. Or all three. But I ran on a platform of bipartisanship. Hi, I'm Janine Hamilton, and I'm running for office. Like many of you, I've spent the last four years disappointed by those who govern our land and their blatant abuse of power. I faced a fork in the road. I looked within myself, as all of you have in your lives, to find and channel the power within to make a change. You see, I'm a mid to late thirties black woman who chose to do what my mother raised me to do. I chose to stand up and take a step forward toward progress. I believe there are more people like us. More people who are tired of living in tyranny and ready to exercise the power in themselves to get our land back to a place of decency. That's why I'm asking for your vote on Tuesday, November 3rd. Good, right? Well, it wasn't good enough. But after all I'd fought for, I was genuinely interested in at least trying to understand what these people believed in. The only things I believe in are ownership and family, real estate and money, security and protection. Shit, I'm from the South. My mama taught me how to build power. Mr. Wesley, your guests have arrived. Pearl approached the drawing room with... Lose the mask, Pearl. I'm serious. <laughs> It was that kind of afternoon. We'll come back to introductions. Pearl looked to my dad for guidance. You see, Pearl's parents are in their 80s and live with Pearl and her husband in a small apartment over the hill. The last thing she wanted to do was risk exposure, but my father nodded for her to remove the mask, mouthing, It's okay. Everywhere I go, Wesley, it's the goddamn mask. Mask, mask, mask. If the big guy doesn't need one, <laughs> we don't need one. Now that's Whitaker Yates. He looked at me. I looked at him. We both understood my mask was staying on. I am surrounded by sheep. I'd tell them, but surely they know what they are. Or they'd never understand the concept. Either way. Whitaker was one of conservative news's favorite political pundits. Early 50s with an impressive head of hair. A master in the political arena. Then there was... So nice to see you, Wesley. <laughs> Governor Cheryl Strong. 
I've never understood what her politics actually are, but damn, she can wear a pantsuit with the best of them. Late 40s. Nice smile. Vacant eyes. I should bring up the fact that we've lost a judicial legend in our land. A woman who made this journey of mine even possible. A woman whose scroll of accomplishments should be preserved, not pummeled, and not patronized by the token nomination of a woman intent on tearing down all she stood for, all she worked for. But my father, my brothers, and now my husband have always relied on the women in their lives to safeguard their worldview. I hope they've got some hard liquor here. And bringing up the rear of this trifecta was Pastor Eric Zhang, early 40s. It's a wonderful day to celebrate, friends. Somehow, that religious caller allowed him to overlook the hypocrisy of the church's support for their dear leader. I guess that's why he tended to keep his thoughts to himself. The deal with the devil before me is the only way I can make sure the Lord's will is done and earthly temptations are removed from the pathway of the wayward. Myself included. Right? Meanwhile, Rusty was across the drawing room touching everything in sight. Entitlement, anyone? I grabbed the one piece of artwork that I actually like out of his hands and placed it back on its pedestal. I don't like it just because I bought it for my dad on a trip to Africa that resulted in reconnecting me with my roots. It's a wooden statue of an African tribesman beating three Bugarabu drums. Anyway, I like it because of what it means. So I told him. There's a proverb that goes with this. It speaks to the importance of accountability. And... <laughs> Did he just put his hand up to silence me? This mother... You know, you almost hit me earlier. I'd like an apology. <laughs> I don't apologize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, Rusty, Janine, join us. Happily. But did he just call Rusty's name before mine? <sighs> anyway, as Rusty and I approached, I couldn't help but smile at my dad being the consummate host. Until I turned my head and saw Whitaker, the ultimate close talker, acting like he owned the place. He passed Adam a briefcase while giving him what looked like some pretty detailed instructions. Next, I saw Pastor Eric hand Whitaker some kind of envelope. I didn't want to know what kind of transaction was taking place, but the likelihood that cash was exchanged? I'd say 100%. And you know my track record with educated guesses. Folks, I'd like to introduce you to my daughter, Janine. Hi, Janine. Hi, Janine. Janine needs no introduction. Sorry about that hard loss last night. Right. How did he know that? And this, of course, is our special guest, Rusty. Who's special guest? Those were my dad's thoughts. And he clearly wasn't alone, because the governor and pastor both looked in my dad's direction with puzzled faces. Pearl returned with a tray of champagne. But as much as I needed a drink, I had no intention of toasting to this nightmare of a brunch. Exquisite timing, Pearl. <laughs> Please, raise your glasses. <sighs> Many people sacrificed for this, and victories deserve to be celebrated. Despite <laughs> how the fake news media presents our dear leader, we defy the odds. We broke free of familial expectations and pushed past outdated ideas that our culture has about what it means to be for the people. We sacrificed, and it was worth it. I invited you all to my home today to ask <laughs> that you stand behind me as I officially put my hat in the ring to be our next leader. To the future! Through the present. present! Yeah, I set that part out. That, my friends, is breaking news. Source. From both the New York Herald Gazette and San Francisco Nugget Examiner, former 
prostitute turned ambassador to the Republic of Miranda comes forward with evidence of an affair with our dear leader. She admitted that together they siphoned $27 million from the public's retirement security fund to pay for real estate investments, travel, golf course dining, and tanning lotion. Check Billy Bob's Daily Observer and Journal. It's loading. Guest opinion piece. If an affair powers our dear leader in these trying times, then that's okay with me. By Reverend Justice Faith. Relax, Pastor. Think about everything you've got in the past four years. And what lies ahead. <laughs> We're winning. Pearl always had the most impeccable timing. Ladies and gentlemen, brunch is served. We followed Pearl into the dining room. In the corner of my eye, I saw Whitaker put his arm around Rusty. How'd it go this morning, young man? Well, you've built a real army. <laughs> yeah, well, we try. We try. I appreciate you flying me out. I have to say I didn't expect to end up in quite such a specific environment here. <laughs> Who knew? I saw something deflate in my dad, but that's only because I know him so well. It was the slight sag of his shoulders, quickly replaced by a lifting of the chin. Wounded pride. I knew I had to stay and support him. Oh. Oh, what a treat. In the dining room, both Adam and a Mexican feast awaited. Trucker hats emblazoned with an aggressive and completely illegible signature were placed at each setting. It was the same signature I'd seen scribbled on executive order after executive order for the last four years. Executive orders that were nothing but photo ops and not worth the paper they were printed on as far as policy or progress. Those, my friends, are gifted to you directly from our dear leader. <laughs> our seats were assigned. Dad and Whitaker faced off at opposing heads of the table. Governor Cheryl and Pastor Eric were on one side, and, ugh, me and Rusty on the other, facing them. In celebration of this second term, Mr. Wesley asked us to present to you Taco Tuesday. On a Wednesday. Tacos! Woo! Oh, Mexicans, delicious. Beautiful people. Great destination. <laughs> Pearl and Adam set the food out, working around the table in opposite directions. The meal was rounded out with bottles of Mexican beer. Pastor Eric chugged his beer like a shot and stood up. Bow your heads, please. Father, we thank you for this communion, for using us to edify this lost world through our dear leader. Although we may not understand all the ways you choose to use us, we trust that it is right and just Hallelujah! Right. We ask that you bless this meal and give us the courage to continue to live by your example. Amen. 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 I joined in on that one. We proceeded to study our plates. You said Mexican, right? <laughs> yes. Your dear... Our dear leader has put an embargo on all Mexican produce, so we've had to be somewhat creative in constructing our taco. We've substituted okra for lettuce, artichokes for avocado, and zucchini for traditional Mexican corn. I was, however, able to scratch together a batch of my family's original habanero sauce. Rusty shot a look at Pearl that she's felt her entire life in this country the country where she was born and has always been a citizen, it did not go unnoticed. I was born here. Oh, got him! Woo, yeah! Got I recognize him. that voice. Oh, yeah. It's what Rusty yelled as they almost ran me over. The rest of the table checked their phones. Oh, they slowly recognized oh, yeah. that alert was specific to Rusty. Why is he looking at Adam like that? Pendejo. Pendejo means asshole. I thought the same thing as I locked eyes with Pearl. What was that? A nap I just released. Hmm. 
The last thing Rusty gave off was Tech Guru. We hope you enjoy your meal. And this momentous celebration. Amigos! Don't forget your hats. <laughs> Pearl was not about that hat, but Adam took the bait, excited. He placed one hat on his head and passed the other to Pearl as they headed for the kitchen. It was clear to me that Pearl was going to give him a piece of her mind in private. ¿Qué te pasa? No confundas un uniforme caro con una invitación a la fiesta. <sighs> Here we go again. El señor Wesley es una cosa, pero ese pendejo Whitaker no es tu amigo. Somos diferentes. Tú eres un sirviente. Para mí, es el comienzo. Yo te conseguí este trabajo. Un favor para tus padres. Y siempre estaré agradecido. Pero eso afuera es el sueño americano y yo lo quiero. For those that don't speak Spanish... Pearl basically told Adam that you can't mistake an expensive uniform for an invitation to the party, and that Mr. Wesley is one thing, but that asshole Whitaker is not your friend. She reminded Adam that she got this job for him as a favor to his parents. Adam, though he'll always be grateful to her for doing that, reminded Pearl that she is a servant. But for him, this position is just a stepping stone. Basically, he thinks that their dear leader is a great man. No, no bueno. Back in the dining room, we all navigated our reimagined tacos as best we could. I tossed my hat to a nearby side table, but everyone else sat there advertising the dear leader's signature on the real estate of their foreheads, and furthermore, rent-free in their minds. Whoa. Were the protesters coming back? I would have preferred to have joined them. The only one without concern on their face was, of course... Thanks again for hosting, Wesley. We're all excited to have you use your unique uh, qualities to uh, bring more folks to the winner's table. Hear, hear! <laughs> Rusty raised his beer in the air, splashing suds everywhere. Whitaker turned to me and said, Little known fact, Neen. Uh, may I call you Neen? I hate this guy. Yeah, I've always reveled in the gumption of small-town politics and... Neen, you, you put on quite the fight upstate. Yeah, you, you, you got the right spirit. Though I, I would have gladly advised you, uh, for the right price, <laughs> that it's impossible to win on a platform of free education, pandemic preparation, conservationism, and <laughs> reparations? <laughs> reparations, yeah, right. Hey, Neen, you should have called Whitaker. He could have set you straight. <laughs> I locked eyes with Governor Cheryl. She seemed to be offering some silent solidarity. <laughs> Silence does nothing, by the way. There's a time and a place to speak up. The sooner she learns, the better off she'll be, and we can get the hell out of this patriarchal <clears throat> pep rally. Obviously, I wish things had gone differently. <laughs> but I still believe we approached the ballot box with the same anxiety as the confessional. I threw a look at Pastor Eric for good measure. We all seek atonement. Then, I turned my attention to Rusty. Tapping into those anxieties has always been the ammunition of those in power. Couple that with suffocating the vote and gerrymandering to minimize the value of the votes that do get counted and- Janine. I saw my dad's look and decided to wrap it up. I turned to Whitaker, closing my little speech with, but hey. <laughs> What do I know? I'm a failed candidate. I just hope we can all lay our heads down at night in good conscience when we think about our choices and what it says about our values. I'd made my point. Or at least I'd stated it. Anyway, as Wesley said, we're here today to not only celebrate last night's victory, we are here to also pass the baton. Nothing shows you what a man is made of like being on the battlefield together and it's clear to me, there's only one man that has what it takes to lead us forward. My dad smiled about as widely as I'd seen since before my mom died. I nodded, doing my best to be supportive. Everyone was anxious to have Whitaker complete his thought. Mr. Rusty Covington! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! What the hell? 
My dad didn't say that out loud. But the sentiment made its way around the table, inner monologue to inner monologue. What the hell? What the hell? But Rusty was too busy celebrating to notice. Did he know just how much he didn't deserve this? How much he was being pandered to? From me and our dear leader himself, you are the future. Now that we won, I'll be heading back home, and uh, you'll all be falling in line behind this young man right here. But first, just a few housekeeping items. Whitaker moved toward Governor Cheryl. He stood behind her and placed his hands on her shoulders. She was clearly uncomfortable, but said nothing. If I hold my breath and stay completely still, this moment will pass. I see you take the hands-on approach. Why so nasty? Janine, we're all friends here. Governor, I have a special message for you, directly from our dear leader. First, he's excited to see what you do next for the working people in your second term. He hadn't forgotten what you sacrificed. Climate crisis? Hoax! Hoax! That's okay, Rusty. <laughs> Governor, we, uh, we know it was put on the back burner of your agenda in order to focus on what got you reelected. More guns! <laughs> but uh, here's the message. Whenever you want to talk about how warm the globe is, here's a special invitation to pay a visit to the big house. Anytime. <laughs> Whitaker handed the governor a key. She clearly understood the innuendo. Besides, we have plenty of time to deal with the environment. It'll be a third term priority. Oh yeah, we're, we're, we're working on that. Winning! Whitaker paused a moment to read whatever news had set off his alerts. He made his way over next to Pastor Eric. We're all in this together, Governor. Uh, just like uh, Pastor Eric here. Whitaker slapped Pastor Eric on his back, knocking bits of okra out of his taco. Pastor Eric didn't like it, but dealt with it. Seems that's what they all do here. He is a man, not of material things, but of the cloth. A soldier for the Lord. He's personally done his duty and saved countless babies from a terrible fate. Pastor Eric understands, as we all do, that... No man is perfect. Can I get an amen? Oh, my God. Even a man as sacred as the pastor can look beyond the fact that our dear leaders had multiple affairs, been married two to five times, I'm not quite sure, and tends to speak in bluster. In lies. Innocent hyperbole is more accurate. He's a carnival barker and a snake oil salesman and a fucking... Janine! <laughs> and yet, here we are, winning. He's our dear leader. Enjoy your tacos. I had had enough. I placed my napkin on my plate, locked eyes with my dad, and stepped away from the table as... <coughs> that alert, however, was only for my father. What the hell is this? I stopped. What is it? My dad just kept reading. And reading. And rereading. Whitaker returned to his seat next to Rusty. What Wesley's reacting to is a procedural update as to how our dear leader will build our border defense system. Go ahead and read it, Wesley. Dear Mr. Hamilton, congratulations. In the interest of furthering our dear leader's campaign initiative, begun more than four years ago, we are pleased to inform you that we have taken possession of your 22 rental units and four apartment buildings on the border. Eminent domain? Source. The sources. The sources. Whitaker. My father was shooting daggers at Whitaker. Not me per se, but uh, yes, that's uh, from my office. It's nothing personal. Anyone with land along that 2,500 mile stretch has happily obliged. Whitaker passed us a piece of paper. It was a before and after mock-up, 
showing the beautiful fair housing complex Rusty had been fascinated by earlier in my dad's drawing room, transformed into an ugly wall with the same signature emblazoned on the trucker hats. I fell back in my seat. Governor Cheryl and Pastor Eric shared the same shock of my father, while Rusty just continued to eat, smirking. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Strong. Listen, Hamiltons, I too believe that affordable housing should be available to all. Just not there. And Wesley, you have my word, we're going to deal with that urban housing project revitalization stuff in the third term. We love the blacks. And besides, stick with the team because, hey, what do you have to lose? This is not what we discussed, Whitaker. We wanted the border, Wes. This is how we're getting it. Do something, Dad. Say something. Oh, got him! Woo, yeah! My dad turned to Rusty and said, Boy, what in the fuck is that? Rusty stood up suddenly, knocking over his collection of empty beer bottles. He took the floor and spoke with huge, overly animated hand gestures, as if the more he moved his arms, the more he'd land his point. His hands were small. Okay. While y'all been in these fancy houses with your designer clothes and your nasty-ass brunches and your drawing rooms pontificating on fake news and bogus issues like pandemic preparation. I'm sorry, Pastor, but that one's on you. That came from Gina. Or, or you, Governor, taking a simple weather check and a choice between rolling up your dungarees or throwing on a sweater and turning it into an environmental crisis. And then he turned to me. And <laughs> reparations? <laughs> I mean, reparations. We talking about slavery. Again. And can you prove that even happened? No, you can't. So stop trying to give us a bill. Anyway. While y'all have been doing all of that, I've been hard at work. I've been dealing with the real threats this land is facing. That's right. At this moment, it seemed like my dad, Governor Strong, Pastor Zhang and I all thought that this guy was dangerous. But in the kitchen, Adam saw it differently. He's the future. Adam had been watching the previous exchange, tucked away at an angle where he remained unseen to everyone but me. I couldn't understand. He looked energized, enamored even. Is that all it took to get people behind you? A few catchphrases and complete disregard for humanity? <laughs> no wonder I lost. As Rusty continued his one-man campaign rally in the dining room, Pearl peeked in and took a look for herself. She sidled up next to Adam. Adam, don't you see? He's living in the past. Back in the dining room, Rusty <laughs> was on a roll. <laughs> Don't get me started. Don't get me started on free education. Who deserves that? Who deserves that? College ain't a right. It's not a gun. It can't protect you. I'm worried about the death tax and not being able to pass my estate on to my loved ones. You know, what if I have a company one day? Maybe I will. What about that? I'm worried about the payroll tax. I'm worried about my capital gains. My right to life. My life matters. How about that? I'm worried about my heritage. Whitaker was smiling now. Looks like you've got yourself another sucker, Whitaker. Sucker? <laughs> ah! You are masquerading around this palace, all the money in the world, thinking it makes a difference for someone like you. Huh? Well, who's the sucker? Who's in charge now? Sure does look like it's me. And I will be the first one to benefit from the amazing statute. Amazing statute? What is that? All right. Y'all over here, the support and cash, you don't even know what happens at the real winner's table. Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Our dear leader, being the only one with real balls to hold a seat since the founding fathers, will be announcing the amazing statute this evening. Being that he is the best leader that ever lived, the final results of yesterday's elections will be revised by noon tomorrow. And any people 
who did not exercise their right to vote will be votes counted in his favor. <laughs> because even if they don't say it, they know he's amazing. Woo! Third term. At this point, it had become one big self-inflicted wound. It was my own damn fault for sitting through this when I knew it wasn't going to be good. I'm done. I headed away from it all. The dining room, the kitchen, the bullshit. I removed my mask and looked in the mirror of the bathroom. One of those long looks where you're thinking about what your place in the world is. When you think about all you have lost. Your heroes, your joy, your hope. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Like the actual weight of oppressive forces were on my neck. I felt helpless. That is the weapon of choice of the oppressor. It felt like they had won. It felt like it was over. <laughs> I made my way upstairs, finally. I sat through a $600 ride share and all of those miles in Ahmad's car so I could lay down on my childhood bed to lick the wounds of a losing campaign and having my life upended by our dear leader because of it. The bedroom was untouched, as promised. I walked over to the Alice Walker poster that my mother put up on my seventh birthday. It showcased her favorite quote. <clears throat> the most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. Then... This is my house! What the hell are you doing? Shut up, old man. I am tired of playing around here. This ain't a toy. My pity party would have to wait a little bit longer. The fear in my dad's voice sent me right back downstairs. I approached the dining room to find Rusty pointing a gun at Pearl and Adam. A Glock 45, to be specific. Uncertain of what was going on and whether or not my intrusion might escalate things, I hung back to watch the events unfold. I locked eyes with my dad, who saw me from the corner of his eye. His look was somehow... calming. Rusty read from his phone. Ricardo Villegas, you are living in this country illegally. By the power given to me, by my birthright. I'm sending you back where you belong. My name is Adam. Don't play with me, Chico! You were born in Mexico City to Juan and Cecilia Villegas. And you've been living in my country since 1995, with no right to be here. Adam looked confused until his eyes met Pearl's. Pearl, who knew his parents and got him the job working for my father. Pearl confirmed with her eyes that this was true. Adam, Pearl. I'm sorry, Mr. Wesley. Rusty, this is not the way, son. Whitaker, do something! Do what? Whitaker was seated, watching everything unfold as if it were reality TV. He shrugged in response, sipped his Mexican beer. I must say, didn't see this coming. Rusty kept his gun trained on Adam the entire time. Now, in about four minutes, I'm talking about cuatro minutos, a pickup truck's gonna pull up out front. Okay? And me and you, Chico, we're gonna get in it. We got you. I entered the dining room and stepped in front of Adam. Rusty had no problem keeping the gun pointed directly at my forehead. Janine! Pearl stepped forward, shoulder to shoulder with me, further shielding Adam from Rusty. <sighs> Women are gonna save the world. You think I won't light you up, girl? My dad moved to shield me, but I stepped closer. Toward Rusty. Sometimes you don't think. You just do what's right. I never took my eyes off Rusty, but behind me, I knew what we were doing. We were building a wall of our own. A wall of protection. For Adam, this was real. They couldn't change the channel. I said, 
The only folks who get power through the process are people like Whitaker. They are the architects of your circumstance. <laughs> they just get richer and more powerful from your anger, and you get nothing. Rusty shot a frantic look at Whitaker. Whitaker? Whitaker? What is this? Y'all better back up! Right now! Governor Cheryl and Pastor Eric moved slowly, but deliberately in my direction. They joined the wall around Adam. Whitaker finally stood up. Are we done? Do we all feel good about ourselves? Call your mothers. Bunch of goddamn sheep. You're all acting like you weren't a part of this. I want my hats back. I want my goddamn hats back. I closed the distance to Rusty. I didn't stop until his gun was at point-blank range. The barrel was cold. Now, come on, Rusty, it doesn't have to be this way. Don't, Don't do, do it. it! I love this country. Don't you see what he's doing? Consider the source, Rusty. Oh! Got him! Woo, yeah! Got him! Woo, yeah! You know? <laughs> I never did get to tell you all about that proverb connected to that sculpture I picked up for my dad in Africa. The one Rusty didn't want to hear about. Well, here it is. He that beats the drum for the madman to dance is no better than the madman himself. Wednesday morning. The future is ours. Power to, to the, the people. people. Wednesday Morning was produced by the director and Lighten Up Productions. Directed by Pete Chapman. Written by Pete Chapman and Candace Sanchez McFarlane. Executive produced by Pete Chapman and Kelly McCreary. And produced by Candace Sanchez McFarlane, Christina DeHaven Call, and Tristan Nash. Wednesday Morning stars Kelly McCreary as Janine Hamilton. Spencer Garrett as Whitaker Yates. Coleman Domingo as Wesley Hamilton. Blake DeLong as Rusty Covington. Joy Nash as Governor Cheryl Strong. Louis Ozawa as Pastor Eric Song. Elena Campbell Martinez as Pearl Mendoza. Remy Ortiz as Adam Villegas. And Mani Aliamad as Ahmad Farazi. Music written, composed, and performed by E. Lu. Sound design by Matt Polis of Soundspace. Our cast was recorded at Soundbox LA and CDM Studios in New York City. Special thanks to Troy Smith, Brandon Porter, Tiffany Hasborn, Michael Reynolds, Jada George, Matt Morgenthaler, Jamila Webb and First 15, Superlative, Jared Shelton, Tim Friedlander, and Michelle Haynes at Soundbox LA. Charles DiMontebello and Tucker Dalton at CDM Studios. Diane Hodson, ABS Payroll, Stacey O'Bearn, and sag after. In a democracy, the president doesn't decide if he leaves office. We do. Elections have consequences but not as dire as the consequences of not voting. Vote in your local elections. Vote in your state elections. Vote in your federal elections. Vote for your sheriffs. Vote for your judges. Vote for your board of education. Volunteer at your local polling place. Vote them in, but just as importantly, vote them out. And remember, you too can be like Janine. Run for office and represent the people of your community. Use your voice, change the game. Wednesday morning, a Pete Chapman podcast. Power to the people.
This podcast is protected under the copyright laws of the United States. The story, all names, characters, and incidents portrayed in this production are fictitious. No identification with actual persons, living or deceased, places, buildings, and products is intended or should be inferred.